Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, we're gonna go over a bunch of stuff I grabbed from Twitter, a bunch of charts, a bunch of sayings or, or comments. Uh, we go over them together. I'm gonna show you that we're continuing to draw down our oil inventories, our gasoline inventories, our distillate inventories, all of our inventories of a lot of things are all depleting. And I don't have some of the other things like Nickel inventories, zinc inventories, copper inventories, everything. It's all depleting, guys. It's all depleting. So when we look at this, the commodity bull market is very strong. It's stronger than it's ever been. And then your question is going to be, well, why is it down in the short term? I don't know. I don't know why it's down in the short term. I guess we're getting stuck with the overall market and it's pulling us lower. But fundamentally, structurally, underneath these markets, it's never been more bullish. Even in the real estate market, it's never been more bullish ever if you were to look at inventories. And I think we just need to relax and buy it all up. That's what I'm doing. I'm literally buying everything I can. Why? Because we are going to have a recession in the overall stock market, period. Demand has to be cut. And I don't think it's going to be detrimental to the supply side because the supply side is causing this. So I'm, I'm sticking with what's causing the recession, which is the lack of things, <laughs> the lack of things. So let's dive in here. I'm going to talk about some of this stuff. We've got uh, in the upper left-hand side here, this is the U.S. gasoline stocks. Doomberg is the one that posted this. The orange is our inventory of gasoline stocks. Looks a little bit out of whack, doesn't it? We are way below the five the five year average which is this grayed out zone we are far below it looking at uh the us and i'm i'm going to jump around here this is the the two year yield for for us uh bonds vertical vertical why is it going vertical cuz we have massive inflation guys everyone is exiting bonds it's like see ya wouldn't want to be ya that money has to rotate somewhere we're going to get inverted yield curves. We're going to get all sorts of crazy stuff. We have supply shortages coming up a, couple, you know, a year or two from now. They're going to be, I think, quite dramatic, like gasoline, like wheat, like corn, like zinc, like copper. I mean, everything. We've got silver. This is from Grady uh, on Twitter. The mother of all probable cup and handles. This goes all the way back from 1970s, the big 70s bull market, the biggest cup and handle you've ever seen. And then when this thing breaks, it's going to be massive, absolutely massive for silver from a long, big picture view. So what, 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 what have I done? I've just positioned myself all the way in this general cup handle and bought everything I could. And I'm not selling, guys. I'm looking at the big picture view on everything here. The short term can do whatever it wants. I'm buying stuff when they're when it's down. Period. Period. Silver versus the S and P 500 looks like it's ready to break out and move on higher. Silver is actually looking quite good here, at least from this ratio. It says yet another one of my big picture charts that showed a glorious commodities bull market starting, and we're just starting, guys. The day to day activities you shouldn't be looking at. You should look at it from a yearly, you know. A decade long plus perspective. I uh, think we will see some sort of yield curve control going forward as bonds plummet and yields rise. And this, plus coming capital flows from general equities, oil, and bonds, will have precious metals go into the next bull market phase where they will really move. That's what he's thinking here. This ratio chart shows the Canadian Toronto Stock Exchange, mainly commodity companies, versus the U.S. S&P 500 large cap index. TSX will go up, and the S&P 500 will go down. Looking at Nate, he, said, <clears throat> he says, just checked in, completely normal trading. I'm so used to it. It doesn't phase me, but these cliff drops are hilarious in what passes for a legitimate market. What he's talking about is this has to be manipulated, and I agree you just get these cliff drops where you have these massive sell-offs where price drops massively in this zero, you know, basically hardly any time. Someone is just coming in, piling a bunch of sell orders. And we're seeing it across a bunch of different sectors. 
Uh, coming on up here, going to the left here, this is the 10-year real yield. It continues to decline. Whoa. Uh, we've got inflation going up, and we have the interest rates remaining ultra low, which is creating a very large real negative yield. And maybe we go super negative. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, here we've got margin call. Google Trends broke out. That's this guy here, margin call, and it is rocketing higher. Uh, I've talked about margin calls uh, that people uh, are potentially getting. <laughs> Josh Young making fun of this. Uh, calls a double top in energy. Good contrary indicator. <laughs> he just puts these little two tops. Uh, this is going to break out to the upside, and we're going to see a massive bull market energy, in my opinion. Uh, this is like this is equivalent to the year 2000, 2001, where the NASDAQ sells off. We have real estate in the largest deficit and the lowest inventories ever in America. We are looking at a continuation move to the upside with inflation and I think energy. Uh, this is Bitcoin. Bitcoin potentially could be breaking its uptrend line and doing a full uh retrace to twenty uh, twenty thousand dollars or so we'll see what that if that happens again that's probably interest rate sensitive uh moving on up we've got uh grady again it says tech is the holy grail for many when they realize what is happening the capital inflow into commodity companies will be massive looks like it's breaking away from the back test now which fits with a very possible general equities top forming here. And I completely agree uh, with this comment. We are bottoming in, in commodities, and he's using the Canadian composite index versus the Vanek vector semiconductors. And it says this ratio chart moving up means smaller commodity companies are outperforming semiconductor sector. And we're going to see a big move higher. Now, this is on a big long-term time frame. We're going to be bouncing all around in the short term. Big long-term picture view, commodities higher, technology lower, interest rates higher, inflation higher. Looking at uh, the commodity to equity ratio, I'm looking at that again. We are just coming out of the great rotation that's coming between commodities and equities. We are just starting this move. We are in inning six. We could be in inning six if it's a 60-inning game, maybe. But this is just starting. It's just starting. Uh, looking over here, we've got the biggest bond bubble in 800 years continues to deflate after the latest inflation number shake up the bond markets. The value of global bonds has dropped by another $493 billion this week, bringing the total loss from all-time high to $7.94 trillion. Now, this money is going to rotate into something. It has to go somewhere. Where is that somewhere? It all can't go into commodities. It all can't go into gold. The markets aren't big enough. It's going to go everywhere. It's going to go into real estate. It's going to go into all these different things. And perhaps with the 800, the biggest bond bubble in 800 years, the money is going to be so large because that's $8 trillion. That's bigger than the gold market. That's bigger than all these markets. Wait until it really heats up. All this money is going to rotate, and it's going to rotate into the stuff that we're in. It will be the biggest bull market that I think we've ever seen because the bond market's in the biggest bubble. That is really what has to unwind, and stocks will unwind as well. We've got ARK ETF. This is the innovation ETF continuing to get slammed the largest down week here recently, and this is the one-month percent change. Look at that percent change in that this past week. We've got uh, percent New York Stock Exchange above the 200-day moving average. That's continuing to decline, breaking new lows. Lower lows, lower highs. What do you think the S&P 500 is going to do? It's just starting to break its support zone, making a lower low. <clears throat> and this could ha cause havoc in the short term for some of our commodity investments. It could be dragging us lower a little bit. But that's okay, guys. The big picture is all intact. We know 
that the big picture is there. We know that real estate's at all time record low for inventories. We know all of this. It's just positioning and holding on. We've got uh, to put things into perspective, NASDAQ 100 falls 13% in April, the biggest monthly drop since 2008. And I don't think this is a 2008 because we had a housing market crash in 08. We don't have a housing market crash. Things are crashing because of interest rates. Interest rates are chasing inflation higher. The Federal Reserve is put up in the corner of a of a of a they're in the corner of a room and they have nowhere to go. They are they are screwed. They can't raise they, if they raise rates, they completely destroy the bond market and stock market. If they don't raise rates, they have run away inflation with the largest real negative yields that anyone is ever going to see. You're just going to see people continue to pile out of bonds like no other because they're losing purchasing power staying in bonds. That money has to rotate somewhere, and that money is going to rotate into precious metals and these other things. The thing that we have to prepare for is that rotation. Are these shortages? And here's another one. Distillate inventories. This thing's in no man's land, way below five-year averages, and we'll see how low this goes. We're also going lower in motor gasoline inventories from a big picture view. We're at the low end. Now, we'll see if this blows out to the, to the downside. Summer driving season's coming. We'll see what happens. But what what I want to what I want you to to gather from all this is you got to take the big picture view. You got to take the big picture view. That's where the big money's made. The big money is where the big trends are. The small little trends that happen on a month to month basis are are too small. Those are buying opportunities for a big trend. What is the big trend? Money's rotating into commodities. It's rotating away from bonds and stocks. We could get pulled down with those markets selling off. Think of the margin calls and the margin, the leverage in the system, that we have to deleverage that that area. Now, would I sell my commodities because of a potential deleveraging? No, because the fundamental structural market conditions underneath are all incredibly positive. There's no way I would be stuck out of it if it were to rotate and come back in and 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 launch higher. So I'm buying I'm using this as buying opportunities to beef up my positions wherever possible. I think that the strongest bull market in commodities is coming and is ahead of us, and we just have to be patient for it. It will come. The exact timing, difficult to say. And this is this is where I said in 2020, uh, maybe maybe it was 2021 when it was newer on the channel, and maybe not as many people heard this. I said when this start to starts to sell off the overall stock market and bond market, it may pull us lower for a little bit, and we may be. Uh, correlated with the overall stock market, depending on a multiple of things. People say, well, would you sell out? I said, no, I would just, I'm just going to ride through it, accumulate the cheap metals and shares of of companies and commodity companies. Uh, Shares, precious metals is the ounces that I would accumulate. And then the shares of the companies, that's how I'm positioning. And if you need help positioning, sign up for the finding value website, platinum membership gets you all the companies that I'm in You can see what I'm doing. I do midweek updates of exactly what I would be buying. And that may or may not help you. But either way, even if the timing's off in the short term, because the short term is the most difficult to time, you're still buying the best companies, period. And I'm continuing to cost average into all these companies. Uh, Oil company, you know, energy companies, metals, some metals, royalty companies is the ones that I really like. I'm getting physical metals. I'm going for it. Why? Because of all of this information and data behind me. All right, guys, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, check out my website below. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.